Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will explain integral controller with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, I will discuss about basics, output, block diagram, transfer function, physical understanding, significance, pros and cons of integral controller. So let us start this video with first agenda. That is basics of integral controller. Integral controller produces an output which is an integration of input signal. So integral controller integrates input signal and it produces output. For example, if you have integral controller over here, then output will be integration of input. Usually in control system with controller, input will be error signal. So here I have mentioned error signal that is input to controller. Output is controlled signal that is M of T. So with integral controller, output M of T that will be constant Ki into integration of input that is error signal, right? Usually we do analysis in frequency domain. To get this output in terms of frequency domain, let us apply Laplace transform. So if you apply Laplace transform, then Laplace transform of single integration is 1 by S. So you can observe M of T, now that is M of S, constant Ki that is as it is, E of T that is E of S, and this integration that is 1 by S. So here gain of this integral controller in frequency domain that is M of S divided by E of S, that is output divided by input. That is Ki divided by S. Usually we represent system in frequency domain. So one should know with integral controller gain is Ki divided by S where Ki is constant and 1 by S explains integration of input signal. Now let me explain block diagram of integral controller with standard second order system. So here you can observe we have standard second order system where here we have controller that is integral controller and as I have explained with integral controller gain is Ki divided by S. Here we have unity negative feedback and here we have standard second order system. Standard second order system is having gain that is omega n square divided by S into s plus 2 zeta omega n. This omega n is natural resonance frequency. This zeta is damping constant. Now I'll explain you transfer function of this system. See transfer function of this system that is output c of s divided by input r of s. And one should know for negative feedback system, transfer function is g of s divided by 1 plus g s h s. Here G of S that is multiplication of this two block means G of S is Ki omega n square divided by S square into S plus 2 zeta omega n. And here H of S that is unity. If you place this data then you will be getting transfer function C of S divided by R of S that is Ki omega n square divided by s cube plus 2 zeta omega n s square plus k i into omega n square. And if you compare this transfer function with standard second order system transfer function, then here one thing that you can notice, see here with integral controller transfer function, here power of denominator is s cube, while with standard second order system, power is s square. What it means? It means because of integral controller, here we are adding one pole in the system. So with integral controller, what we do is we add one pole in the system. And because of addition of one pole, here stability of the system decreases, right? But because of integral controller, we can eliminate steady state error. So here, by adding integral controller, we are adding additional pole in the system 
and because of additional pole in the system, system stability reduces. But integral controller eliminates steady state error. Now I'll explain you physical understanding of integral controller. First of all, you need to know what is the meaning of integration. See, integration means summing up input signal with respect to time. So in integration, what we do is we do summing up of input signal with respect to time. Let me explain that graphically. So here on vertical axis, we have amplitude and on horizontal axis, we have time. Here we have input signal that is changing with respect to time. You can observe over here. Now what will be my output? So my output that will be zero initially. Let us consider that. And my output is summing up of input signal with respect to time. So initially it is zero. Input signal is positive over here. So my output will increase and it will increase up to positive value of input signal. After that, if you observe here input signal that is negative. So my output signal from here onwards, it is decreasing, right? So integral controller produces output that is summing up of input signal with respect to time. So here you can observe my output is increasing as and when my input is positive and my output that is decreasing as and when my input is negative, right? And because of that, if you observe steady state error with system along with integral controller, then that is getting eliminated. Why the reason is as if your input is not there, then output is summing up of input signal. So after infinite time, there will be zero steady state error. So here with integral controller, there will be zero steady state error means offset of system will be zero. But there is an issue of stability. Why the reason is here we have additional pole in the system. So with integral controller, there will be zero steady state error, but there is an issue of stability, right? Now I'll discuss about advantages and disadvantages of integral controller. See with integral controller, we don't have any steady state error. It improves system accuracy and it will be compensating for constant disturbances. And if you talk about disadvantages, then it is having slower response and it reduces stability as we add additional pole in the system and it takes time to get stabilized output. So that is how advantages and disadvantages are there with integral controller. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Still, if any confusion is there, just paste that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.